Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Raw Reaction Show. I'm your host, Glenn Thomas, as always, of one fourth of the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, which you can find on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM and 96.9 FM each and every Thursday night. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, as well as YouTube. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you never miss any of our shows, whether it's a SmackDown review show, whether it's like this show, the Raw Reaction Show, or whether it's our review of pay-per-views wrestling events, WWE Network specials, whatever the case may be, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, let's get started here. I want to get started with this story, which is a major story to myself. It is that the Harlem Heat, Harlem Heat, that's right, Booker T and Stevie Ray uh, will be inducted into this year's Hall of Fame, class of 2019. And the announcement was announced yesterday that Booker T and Stevie Ray uh, will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. This will be the second induction for Booker T. He joins the like of Shawn Michaels and Rick the Nature Boy Ric Flair is being the only two, only three people in this case to be inducted twice into the WWE Hall of Fame. He's also the first African American to be inducted twice into the WWE Hall of Fame. Booker T also was inducted in New York at WrestleMania 29, and he comes back again at WrestleMania 35. Will be inducted this time with his brother Stevie Ray, who was. WCW Tag Team Champions for a total of 10 times along with the Steiner Brothers. These two guys were a staple uh, in WCW. So congratulations to Booker T and Stevie Ray for being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2019. But let's get started with Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw saw the Hounds of Justice, the Shield come down to the ring together as the last time as the Shield. And they had their little ceremony, gave the fist bump uh, the three fists together uh, to signify the end of End of an era for Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. We know that Dean Ambrose's contract is running up. Whether you believe it's a work or not, WWE is talking about it. We know that Roman Reigns would be going on his own to face whoever. And then we know that Seth Rollins will be facing the beast and carnage himself, Brock Lesnar, at WrestleMania 35 this year. But this, they opened the segment up talking about how it was good to wrestle with wrestle against each other once again and they went their separate ways and then Paul Heyman comes down to the ring and talks about the Beast and Seth Rollins and how they would tangle each other at Wrestlemania 35 the crowd starts slaying slay the Beast slay the Beast but nonetheless Shane Seth Rollins was attacked by Shelton Benjamin you know Shelton Benjamin is a close friend of Brock Lesnar, uh, University of Minnesota. They also trained together at Ohio Valley Wrestling, if you did not know. A very good match back and forth, but nonetheless, Shane Seth Rollins picks up to win over Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin is one of those underused talents here in the WWE. He has great charisma. He has great athletic ability. Love to see Shelton Benjamin get a little bit more of a run here in the WWE. Uh, only time will tell and we see where WWE goes with Shelton Benjamin uh, in the future, but Seth Rollins gets picks up to win on this edition of Monday Night Raw. Uh, then we moved on to the Intercontinental title match where we saw Bobby Lashley take on Finn Balor. Back and forth, this match had been advertised on the pre on Fastlane that happened Monday night that Bobby Lashley would take on Finn Balor. Uh, well, you, you know what happened. Leo Rush did get involved in this match. Uh, Leo Rush got involved in the match, and we have a new, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new Intercontinental Champion, Bobby Lashley, for the second time is your Intercontinental Champion with because of the help of Leo Rush, Leo Rush basically uh, back in the good graces of Bobby Lashley, as you will. Uh, Finn Balor only held the Intercontinental title for 22 days. I don't know why WWE let it hold on to it a little bit longer. It'll be interested to see if we get another match between Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley, hopefully at WrestleMania, or will it be a one of those multi-person matches where you can throw Leo Rush in there, you can throw somebody else in there. Uh, I think Finn Balor's Intercontinental title run was a uh, a, a dot. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, uh, he should have had a longer run. Maybe this is setting him up for something later, uh, as he may be able to take on Finn Balor if Finn Balor, excuse me, be able to take on Seth Rollins if Seth Rollins go ahead and defeat Brock Lesnar. Maybe this is propelling Finn Balor to another level. But nonetheless, 22 days as Intercontinental Champion, Bobby Lashley picks up the title once again to have his second run as the Intercontinental Champion with the help of Leo Rush. With only time will tell where this match goes uh, further on in the grand scheme of things for WWE and WrestleMania. Uh, then we moved on to what I thought was one of the better segments of the night. Good to see Dana Brooke back on WWE television. How she comes out and tells Ronda Rousey how she loves WWE and how WWE is basically her life and how, how dare Ronda crap on WWE. How dare Ronda talks about the WWE universe. And you know what happened if you were late, if you were a wrestling fan. Dana Brooke caught the beat down 
uh, by Ronda Rousey, the women's champion, who gave uh, Dana Brooke the beating of her life uh, on this Monday Night Raw, where security had to get involved, separate those two. Uh, but it's good to see WWE giving Dana Brooke something and building Ronda Rousey up as a major heel as we move into WrestleMania. Mania, 20 some days left for us before WrestleMania and Ronda Rousey stock as increasing as a heel lover or a hater. Uh, her heel turn was tremendous. If you don't like it, comment below. Uh, what are your thoughts on the heel turn of Ronda Rousey and how she's doing in her role as a heel? I think she's a natural heel, in my opinion. Uh, no more smiling, no more Mr. Nice Guy. I would like to see her, you know, big on the tire. There's no reason to wear the Rowdy, uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper gear anymore. I mean, I know that he was a heel for those who out there saw oh, Rowdy Piper was a heel too. But hey, let her dress her own way uh, and do her own thing as a heel. I think Ronda Rousey uh, is a good heel. The only time will tell. See where she goes from here. Uh, but then we went on to Ricochet and Alistair Black taking on Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. Uh, once again, your typical tag team match here. Uh, but the thing wasn't the match itself. It was the after, the after effect of the match where the Revival attacks Alistair Black and Ricochet and lays him out. That's right. The Revival gets some retribution on Monday Night Raw. The Revival will go into WrestleMania as your Raw Tag Team Champions. The Revival probably will have a multi-tag team title match uh, with Alistair Black. Uh, AOP maybe the Revival. Uh, Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. Will, that, that's where it's going. I don't see Alistair Black and Ricochet getting a one-on-one -on -one match with Chad uh, with Alistair uh, with the revival. I see this being some kind of multiplayer match, multi tag team match. Only time will tell as we go down the road. But it was good to see the revival uh come get the come up on Monday Night Raw over Ricochet and Alistair Black. Then we move on to what we saw Nia Jax excuse me, we saw to meet yeah, Nia Jax take on Natalia, but Natalia had a little bit of help backstage. She had Beth Phoenix who her partner in crime. We know that Tamina and Nia Jax defeated beat up Beth Phoenix the night before. But it was time for Beth Phoenix to get a little bit of retribution back from Nia Jax. If you remember a couple of years ago, uh, you saw this a little bit in the Royal Rumble when Nia Jax and Beth Phoenix locked up and locked horns. Uh, be interested to see where WWE goes from here with these two ladies, with these four ladies at WrestleMania. Again, probably have a multi tag team match with Sasha and Bailey taking on. Nia Jackson Tamina take it on Beth Phoenix and Natalia. We moved on from there and we saw Triple H and Batista was right. Batista and his host of security guards, indie guys, uh, come into uh, the Pittsburgh Arena, comes into Pittsburgh, and they basically, Batista begged Triple H, give me what I want. Give me what I want. Give me what I want. Triple H, I'll give you what you want. The beating of your life. No, that's not what I want. What I want is a WrestleMania match with you. And Batista got it, ladies and gentlemen. We will have Batista versus Triple H at WrestleMania. And this will be a no hold bar match. A probably 12, 15 minute match where they just get to fight. No wrestling maneuvers. You'll probably see sledgehammers. You'll probably see kendo sticks. You'll see tables. You'll probably see, you'll probably see D Generation X. Probably see a little bit of evolution. You never know. Only time will tell. But you have Batista versus Triple H at WrestleMania, the match is set. It is official. It's one of the, one of the few matches right now that are confirmed. This is one of them. Batista taking on Triple H at WrestleMania. No holds barred. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I think we had another major announcement that come up from Monday Night Raw that Kurt Angle announced that he is retiring after WrestleMania 35. That is his last match. We'll be at WrestleMania 35. Don't know who his opponent is going to be yet. A lot of rumors and speculations out there that John Cena's name has been known thrown out there to be Kurt Angle's last opponent. I hope it's somebody good that we know that most wrestlers, when they retire, their last match is a loss. So hopefully whoever Kurt Angle loses to, they will be able to give them the rub uh, to move on. Well, he took on... Uh, he took on... My he had a match on Monday Night Raw from the end of Pittsburgh. Uh, he took on Apollo Crews, uh, which Apollo Crews was a big fan of Kurt Angle's. And Apollo Crews ended up losing to Kurt Angle in about a 12, uh, 15, 16 minute match, uh, which basically was a squash match where Kurt Angle picked up the win over Apollo Crews. Uh, then we moved on to what I thought was one of the better segments and Drew McIntyre reestablishing himself as a major player in the WWE. Drew McIntyre 
attack Roman Reigns as he was facing, getting ready to face Baron Corbin, and he hit him with a claymere kick. Actually, hit with several claymore kicks, which caused Roman Reigns to have what you I would call a concussion to be a little woozy, could not be able to stand straight. He just beat the living piss out of Roman Reigns. Uh, it's good to see that uh, that Roman Reigns was able to take some of the physicality that that Drew McIntyre, Drew McIntyre brought to the ring, and he brought it to Roman Reigns. Uh, Seth Rollins came out and told the big dog, "Look, come on, let's go." The doctors came out and helped the big dog in the back. He didn't want to go, wanted to be strong, wanted to be tough, but yet we'll see. Maybe down the line, this is setting up Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania, which I think would be a good match. Would be a very good match there. But my heart is telling me this may be a tag team match. They may not be ready for Roman Reigns to be in an individual match yet because Drew McIntyre was not finished there. Dean Brambrose wanted to avenge his brother, so he took on Drew McIntyre in a Falls Count Anywhere match, and this match went everywhere. It went in the concession stand. It went on the announcer's booth. It went to the ramp, and Drew McIntyre, from pillar to post, destroyed Dean Ambrose and picked up the win. So that's how I say it may be a triple. It may be a tag team match, but... Drew McIntyre really established himself to be a major player in this Monday Night Raw in this road to WrestleMania. Let me know your thoughts on Drew McIntyre. Let me know your thoughts on Dean Ambrose, who got who's who for a person who's leaving the company is getting a lot of love from the WWE. Uh, he's getting a lot of love from the WWE. WWE. They're making a lot of announcements about him, Dean Ambrose leaving. Not keeping it a little secret. Maybe they're breaking down the fourth wall and, and not trying to insult the wrestling community or the wrestling fans that know that Dean Ambrose contract is up after WrestleMania. And he, he as of right now, as far as we know, uh, does not want to renew it. Uh, this Monday Night Raw, I have to give it a thumbs up. I thought the Monday Night Raw was interesting. I thought the Monday Night Raw kept me, kept my attention throughout. Had some segments that I could care less about. Don't need to see Braun Strowman defeat or beat up or tear apart or flip over or turn around another car. Uh, don't need to see that. Don't need to see Noe Jose with green braids in his hair looking like the male version of Naomi. Don't need to see that as well. But besides those parts of the show, I uh, thought the road to WrestleMania, first Monday Night Raw officially to the road to WrestleMania uh, was pretty pretty darn good. And I think WWE has much more in store for us for the next three weeks as we lead up to WrestleMania. Hey, leave your thoughts and comments below. Always subscribe, hit the bell notification, and never miss any of our shows. Once again, the Raw Reaction Show or the SmackDown Review Show or any of our shows after pay-per-views, make sure you join us this Thursday night as we talk about more on WWE, more on AEW, more on professional wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to us here on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM, 96.9 FM. Also, if you're not confirmed, consider yourself denied. End of story.